welcome, 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 welcome. Hi. Hi guys. So welcome great times to Turobox Live in conjunction with COVID-19 catch up courses. I'm Lisa Tamatane. I'll be your mathematics tutor. Woo! Alright, so I studied actuarial science and financial mathematics at Tax, that's the University of Victoria. And yo guys, yo, I was not crazy. I was not crazy. It was hot. It was hot. But but your girl made it and she graduated last year. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Okay, so guys. Just feel free, right? We're just going to do maths and maths and maths and maths. Just feel free. This is, just think of it as a no maths judgment. Okay, so you can just ask any maths related question, right? No judgment. Okay, nothing is too serious. Okay, just ask, right? And so, yeah, let's start. So, today we're going to look at the number system. So today we're going to be looking at the number system, okay? Right, so first up, let's just look at the number system in detail, okay? So let's look at natural numbers or counting num numbers sometimes they're called. So natural numbers, these are the positive non-decimal numbers. No zero or negative. So counting numbers, just remember grade one, grade two. You're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to infinity. Okay. And then in pink, we have the positive non decimal numbers, and now zero is included. So for whole numbers, you're starting from zero. It's zero, one, two, three, and so on. And then for integers, that's in yellow, we have positive and negative numbers, and zero is also included. But we still do not have any decimals, right? So Integers, negatives are there, positives are there, and zero is included. So, for example, that can be from, let's say, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And then for rational numbers, that's any number that can be represented by a fraction, right? So you're going to have an integer in your numerator divided by another integer in your denominator, okay? And then separately, we have irrational numbers, Irrational numbers, you can actually think of them as being the opposite of rational numbers, right? So, for example, we have pi, which is 3,14, so on, square root of a non-perfect square, that's also an irrational number, okay? And then all together, all of them combined, these form real numbers. So, all numbers, that's rational and irrational, they are all called real numbers, okay? Let's look at some examples. Okay, so first let's just look at the notation that's used for each one of them. So for reals or real numbers, we use an R. For irrationals, we use a Q with a little one at the top. For rationals, we use a Q. For integers, we use a Z. For whole numbers, we use an N O. Remember, whole numbers is naturals with a zero as well included so that's why there's that n and that little o there and then naturals is just an n okay yes so for examples irrationals pi square root two for rationals i put down there two thirds minus two comma six five six and a quarter and then for integers minus three minus 19 you can also have zero you can also have five and then for whole numbers it's just zero one two three four five six one million whatever and then for naturals you have one two three all the way to infinity okay and then now let's look at rational numbers in detail Okay, so what is a rational number? A rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form a over b, where b is not equal to zero. Keep in mind that if b is equal to zero, that expression becomes undefined. Okay, so we need a number that can be expressed in the form a over b, where b is not equal to zero, and where a and b are integers. Okay, so remember integers is the positive, the negative, and there are no decimals for integers. Okay, so just keep in mind. So example one, we have um, all integers are rational numbers, right? For example, six, I can rewrite six as six over one, right? So that means I've expressed it in the form A over B, 
Okay, let's look at part B. So part B, we have mixed fractions. Mixed fractions are also rational numbers. So for example, of one and one over two, this becomes three over two, okay? And then part C, we have terminating decimals are also rational. For example, 0 0.75, I can write that as 75 over 100. In its simplest form, that becomes three over four. Or you can even have 0 0.4, that becomes four over 10. And then if you simplify it, you get two over five, okay? So those are still rational numbers okay and then let's look at one that's a bit interesting so this one is called recurring decimals so recurring decimals are rational numbers a recurring decimal has an infinite pattern right for example so you can think of it as some numbers repeat that's what a recurring decimal is okay so recurring decimal has an infinite pattern for example we have 0 0.3 and then there's that little dot at the top sometimes they write it as a dot or sometimes they just put like a straight line on top of the number that's repeating so for example if 0 0.3 with that dot there that will be equal to 0 0.3333333 three, three, three. <laughs> and then we also have 0 0.12 that will be equal to 0 0.12 one, two, one, two, one, two. because you see the one has a dot there so that means the one is repeating and the two also has a dot there that means it's also repeating okay next up so i just put back the rational numbers there so that you guys can remember what it is let's just do a quick recap so rational numbers a number that can be expressed in the form a over b where b is not equal to zero and where a and b are integers for example, 4 over 5, 6 over 9. Okay, so now let's check why they say recurring decimals are rational numbers, right? So we want to change a recurring decimal to a fraction, okay? So for example, let's look at 0, 0,7, right? And then the 7 there has a dot at the top, so that means the 7 is the one that is repeating. So our first step is to form a simple equation where x is equal to 0, 0,777777, right? And then now, by multiplying both sides by 10, we can obtain another equation, right? So if we take this and we multiply by 10, this side, this becomes 10x, and then this side will become 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and so on, okay? So this is, this is how they got 10x is equal to 7, 7, 7, 8, okay? Now... We eliminate the recurring parts of the decimal by subtracting x from 10x. Okay, so we want to eliminate the recurring part, the 7777777. Okay, so to do that, we're going to subtract the second equation, right, minus the first equation. Okay, because remember, we want to express it as an exact fraction. Okay, so we don't want... We don't want decimals in either the numerator or the denominator. We only want integers, okay? So that's why we're subtracting 1 from 2, okay? Let's look at that quickly. So if x is equal to 0, 0,77777, and then our second equation is 10x is equal to 7,7777, okay? So now we subtract 2, this one, minus 1, which is that one there. So we have 10x minus x, that gives us 9x. And then 7,77 minus 0, 0,77, that gives us 7. And then if we divide by 9 this side, we have to divide by 9 this side. And then we're left with x is equal to 7 over 9. Okay, so if you're wondering where this came from, because here 9 is multiplying the x, right? And we only want to be left, we only want to be left with the x on the left-hand side, right? So because this 9 is multiplying, we're going to do the opposite of that on both sides. So we're going to divide by 9, and then we're also going to divide by 9. Then we get our x is 7 over 9. Okay, so we have our answer. 0, 0,777 can also be written as 7 over 9, right? So the important, important part, guys, this is NB. The important part to remember is to get two equations in x where the recurring part after the decimal point is exactly the same let's just look at more examples great hands i wanted to stop and tell you that you guys are awesome 
you are. Yeah! Right, so the second example, we have 0, 0,258. Now you see the dot is above the 5 and the 8. So that means the 5 and the 8 are repeating. So let x be equal to 0, 0,2. You see the 2 just stays as 2 there. There's only one 2 because there's no dot above the 2, so it's not repeating. So that becomes x is equal to 0, 0,2, 5, 8, 5, 8, 5, 8, okay, and so on, right? So now... What we want to do is we want to have two equations such that the decimal, after the decimal comma, the numbers are both the same for the first equation and for the second equation. So that we can subtract and then do the rest. Okay, so first, let's multiply by 10. So if we multiply by 10, this becomes 10x is equal to 2 comma 585858, five, eight, five, eight, right? Okay, but then if we look at this one, this equation number one with this one here, the numbers after the decimal point, they are not really the same because this one now is starting with the two and the second and the second one here is starting with the five, right? So we want two equations such that the numbers after the decimal point, they are all equal or they're the same okay so because we can't subtract this one with this one right so now let's multiply again if we multiply by 100 let's try 100 if we multiply by 100 right the decimal point will move one two two times so then we'll be left to 25 comma 8585 but then that won't match with anything here okay because the first one already we had 2 comma 5858 now, if you multiply by 100, we get 8585, five, right? So now let's try 1,000, right? So if you multiply by 1,000, we get 258,5858. Whoa, that's what we want, right? So what we can do now, because these numbers here, after the decimal comma for the first one and for the second one, they're the same, right? So now we can multiply, we can subtract, sorry. So we have 2 minus... 1. Right, so that's equation 2 minus equation 1 here. So equation 2, that would be 1000x minus 10x is equal to 258,5858 minus 2,5858. Right, if we subtract this side, we get 990x is equal to 256. And then we divide this side by 990, divide also this side by 990, we get x to be 200. And 56 over 919. Okay. And then let's look at the last example. So we have 0, 0,7125. Right. So we let x do the same thing. Let x be equal to 0, 0,7125125125. 125. So what I want you guys to notice is the ones that are repeating here, it's 1 and the 5. Right. Because they put the dots there. However, because you have a number in between the ones that are repeating, that number also will repeat. Okay. NB, guys. NB. Let me repeat it. Right. So, if you have the first, let's say the first digit. In this case, we have the one there. It's repeating because it has a dot at the top. And then you also have another number repeating. Right. Right. And then you have a number in between those two that are repeating. The one in between will also automatically just repeat and follow suit. Okay. So let x be equal to 0, 0,7125, 125, 125, and so on. Okay. So still the same steps, the same concept. We're trying to look for two equations that have the same numbers after the decimal comma so that we can just subtract those equations okay so first what i did there was i multiply by 10 right if i multiply by 10 i get 7 comma 1 2 5 1 2 5 and then if i try to multiply it by 100 i get 71 comma 2 5 1 2 5 which is not what i have here for the first equation so let's then try and multiply by 1000 i get 712,512, 512. Mm -mm. Still not the same thing because I want 125, 125. Okay. And then we're going to try and multiply by 10,000. 
I get 7,125,125,125. Oh, looks good. I have a 125 here. Now I have a 125, so now I can go ahead and subtract. Right, so that's going to be equation 2 minus equation 1. If I do the subtraction, I get 9,990x divided by 9,990 is equal to 7,118 divided by 9,990, right? So therefore, x would be 7,118 divided by 9,990, okay? for the next section. Right, and then now oh, to something easier, guys. We also need to remember this, okay? We need to remember this from the early grades. Right, so we have rounding off numbers. Recap, rounding off numbers, this is very easy, guys. So rounding off numbers, the rules for rounding off numbers to certain decimal places are as follows, right? So this is what we do. So you count to the number of decimal places after the comma that you want to round off, okay? And then you look at the digit to the right of this decimal place, right? And then if it is lower than 5, you drop it and all the digits to the right of it, and then if it is 5 or more than 5, then add one digit to the digit immediately to the left of it and drop it and all the digits to the right of it. If necessary, keep or add zeros as placeholders. Okay, that's just too much theory. Let's just <laughs> look at some examples. Okay, so the question says round off the following numbers to two decimal places, to two decimal places. Okay. So for A, we have 2,31437, right, to two decimal places. So let's count. This is one decimal place after the comma. This is the second one after the comma, okay? So we want to round off to two decimal places. So we're going to look at the digit on the right of this one, okay? So which is four, right? So now we check, is four... A five and above or four is below four is below right so we're going to drop down so basically we're going to add a zero to this number here okay so now that becomes two comma three one because the rest becomes zero so you can just add your zeros if you want there or you can just leave it as two comma three one okay Let's look at B. We have 0, 0,7777. It's still to two decimal places. We're going to look at the third one there. It's above 5, so we're going to add a 1 here. Now, that becomes 0, 0,78, and the rest, they drop down to 0, right? So you can also include your 0, 0, or you can just leave it at 0, 0,78. And then for C, we have 2, 
245,13589, okay? And then we're still rounding off to two decimal places, so we're looking at the 5 there. Oh, it's 5, so we're going to add a 1, that becomes 245,14, okay? D, we have 245,2, right? And then now they're saying round off the following numbers to two decimal places. Whoa, but we only have one decimal place. Don't panic. <laughs> okay, so we have 245,2, right? So in place of this nothing here, you can just put a zero, and then there you can also put a zero, right? So you see that the number now, the number now that you're looking at is the zero here in the blue, okay? And zero is below five, so we're just going to add a zero here. So that becomes 245,20, okay? And then for E, we have 11,4963. Now we're looking at the 6. The 6 is above 5. We're going to add 1. However, if we add a 1 here, this becomes a 10, right? So that means we need to jump and add the 1 to this 4 here, okay? So that will become 11,50. Okay, so it's the same thing even if they ask you to round off to three decimal places, to four decimal places, to five, to six, to seven, and so on. Okay, so now let's look at some irrational numbers, right, and a bit of some examples. Okay, so sometimes they can ask you questions similar to these in a test or in an exam, right? So let's just quickly look at those two examples. Right, so it says without using a calculator, determine between which two integers written lies. Guys, please remember what your integers are. Okay. So integers, quick recap. So integers, you have your negative numbers, your positive numbers, and your zero. Don't forget your zero, please. Positive, negative, and your zero. No decimals no decimals i repeat no decimals okay so for you to work out these questions and what you have to do so you have to specifically for this example so you have to find an, an integer smaller than 10 that is a perfect square and another integer larger than 10 that is a perfect square okay then create an inequality and square root all three numbers to get the answer right so it said without using a calculator, determine between which two integers square root 10 lies, right? So the first thing, we're going to look for an integer, which is a perfect square, remember, that is smaller than 10. So we can have 9 and 4, but then we always want to choose the number that is closer to 10, right? So in this case, we're going to pick 9, and then for the parts that's, that's larger than 10, we're going to choose 16, right? So there we go here. And then now we're going to create an inequality. There's our inequality there. It's been created. And then we're going to square root all three numbers to get the answer. So we're going to square root 9, square root 10, square root 16. And the square root of 9 is 3, guys. Please check with your calculator. Square root 16 is 4. So that means that square root 10 lies between 3 and 4, okay? And then if you notice, 3 and 4 are actually integers because they are positive and there is no decimal or comma there or anything funny going on, okay? So it's just square root 10 is greater than 3, but it's less than 4, okay? So you can just confirm with the calculator and check what square root 10 is and then if you see that oh the number actually lies between 3 and 4 then you know your answer is correct okay let's look at b it says without using a calculator determine between which two integers minus square root 10 lies so now they want the negative so it's a negative root 10 right so guys please this negative is not inside here, it's outside. So it's square root 10, and then we want the negative of that square root 10, right? So first we're going to start off with our number, which is 10. And then we're going to pick the smaller integer, which is 9, and then the larger integer, which is 16. Then we're going to square root all three. Square root 9 gives us 3, square root 10 stays at square root 10, and then square root 16 gives us 4, right? Then now, remember, 1 minus square root 10, so we're going to multiply by 
that minus there. So this becomes minus square root 10. Now, note NB, guys, NB. Whenever you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you must flip the inequality sign, right? So we multiply by a negative number here. So this sign will flip. It's like that. Now it becomes like that. This sign will also flip. It's facing that way. Now it's going to face that way. Okay. And then now we can just rewrite this so that we have the smallest one, which is the minus 4. We put it this side. And then we put our sign there, minus square root 10, less than, and then we have minus 3. Okay. So here from this step to the last step, right, we just rearranged because we wanted to put the smallest number and the largest number this side. Okay, so next up, we want to look at the set builder notation and the interval notation. Okay, so let's start with the set builder notation. What is the set builder notation? Right, so let's start with this. A collection of numbers can be described as a set. For example, 1, 3, 5, 9, 13 is a set containing the listed numbers. Right, now set builder notation can be used can be used to build or describe a set. This is especially helpful if the set has an infinite number of numbers or elements, right? So set builder notation is a way of describing a set. For example, right, so we have that open bracket, that curly one there, we have x, we have a semicolon, we have an x, we have a greater than or equal to sign, and then we have a minus 2, and then... It closes the bracket okay or sometimes instead of putting the same the column there they put a straight line but it just means the same thing right so we say the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 right so let me just show you guys so we say the set of all x's Right, the set of all x's such that this these two dots here, that semicolon there, it means such that x is greater than or equal to minus two. Okay. And then now we want to represent real numbers on a number line, right? Using the set builder notation, right? Let's look at some examples. So it says represent the following sets on a number line. So first we have x such that x is greater than or equal to 4 and x is an element of z. Z, remember, those are our integers. Right. So integers, remember, it's negative, 0, positive, but you do not have any decimals. Right. So we want to illustrate this on a number line. So if x is greater than or equal to 4, that, so that means 4 is included, right? And then remember, it's an integer. These are integers, right? So we're going to shade in our 4 there, shade in our 5, shade in our 6, shade in our 7, and then draw that arrow to indicate that it's continuing all the way to infinity because it's greater than or equal to 4, right? So I want you guys to pay attention to how the integers one is different to the real numbers one okay now let's look at b b is over here so if x such that x is less than four and x is an element of z so z those are integers as well but then now x is less than four right so we're going to show our four there but then it's less than four so that means four is not included so we're going to start at three so we're going to have 3 there, shade it in, 2, it's included, 1, it's included, and then it goes all the way to negative infinity. Okay, C now, we have x such that x is less than 5, and x is an element of n natural numbers, guys. n is for natural numbers, right? Natural numbers, remember, those start from 1, counting, grade 1, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so one x is less than five, right? So we have our five maybe here, there's our five there, then we have four, three, two, one. But there's no zero now. Remember, because it's natural numbers. Natural numbers, they started one and they go all the way up to infinity, right? So that's why I was doping here at one. And then let's look at D. We have x such that x is greater than minus 4, but less than and equal to 3, and x is an element of z, integers. Integers, you see our negatives there, they're included, right? So we have x, let's just start with the bigger one, right? Let's start with the bigger one here. So we have a 3 there, right? So x is less than or equal to 3. Right, so x is less than or equal to, so that means that 3 is included. So we're going to shade the 3 in, the 2, the 1, the 0, the minus 1, the minus 2, the minus 3. We don't want minus 4, right, because it's not included there. Okay, so x is not greater than and equal to, no, 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 or equal to, it's just greater than. Okay, so that's why we're not including the minus 4 there, right? So we're only going to include the minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. 3 is included because it's less than uh, and or equal to, okay? And then E, we have X such that X is greater than or equal to 2. But then now X is an element of real numbers, real numbers. Remember what real numbers are. Real numbers, it's everything it's everything it's the rational numbers and the irrational numbers okay so this is why we're drawing a straight line here to show that even the decimals that are in between two and three three and four those zero comma one the two comma three four five six they are all included this is why we're drawing that straight line there instead of putting the circles on just the numbers okay so here I want to show that okay all the numbers are included whether they're decimals or not right so it says x is greater than or equal to 2 right so we're going to put our circle there and we're going to shade it in because it's including 2 there if it's not including this here would be an empty circle you wouldn't shade it in but then because it's including the two, you need to shade it in. Okay, so that would include the two you shaded in, and then you indicate with your arrow there that it's going all the way up to infinity because x is greater than or equal to two. Right. And then now let's look at some examples that ask us for the opposite. They'll give us a number line and then they ask us to write down the following in said builder notation. Okay, so let's look at this one, example six, part A. So it says write the following in said builder notation. So they'll just give us this part here. Okay, they'll give us this part here. And then we need to write it down in said builder notation, right? So from just looking at this diagram, you should notice that you don't have any points shaded in like specific points like one two three four what you notice is that you have a straight line right so that means everything is included so that should automatically say to you real numbers real numbers so that means x is an element of real numbers right so now let's look at the interval right so we see that at minus three we have a shaded circle and at four we have a circle that's not shaded so remember, circles that are not shaded, they mean that it's not included. And then the ones that are shaded means that it's included. Right. So we're going from minus 3 to 4. Right. So that means that x would be less than 4, but x would be greater than or equal to minus 3. Okay. Then now let's look at b. b, they just gave us this part here. Right. So you can narrow it down, you can first start, okay, so this could represent natural numbers or it could represent integers, but it can't be natural numbers because for natural numbers, 
we would have to start at 1. This one now has 0 included and also has negatives included. Oh, so that means it's what? Integers. So x is an element of integers, right? So we see that 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So all these are included, right? So that means that my x will be between 3 and minus 3. So x x such that x is greater than or equal to minus 3, but less than or equal to 3, and x is an element of z. Okay. Then let's look at c. So C, you see now they gave us a straight line there, so that should automatically tell you real numbers, real numbers, right? And then this circle now is not shaded in, so that means that it's not going to include minus 3, right? And then it's going from minus 3 all the way this side, up that side, right? So that means that our answer would be X such that X is greater than right x is greater than minus 3 and x is an element of real numbers okay and then for d we have also a straight line but then this time it's going backwards that side and then for the circle there is shaded so you're going to have for all x such that x is less than or equal to 4 and x is an element of real numbers don't forget to stretch in interval notation, we just write the beginning and ending numbers of the interval and we use a square bracket when we want to include the AND value or a round bracket when we don't. Okay, so there's our square bracket there, that's our round bracket there. Right, so let's just quickly look at this. So we have a square bracket 0, 20 and then we have another square bracket, right? So the square bracket, it means that it's including the 0. Right, and then also the side. If we have a square bracket there, that means that it's including the 20. Right, and then if we have a round bracket, that means that 0 is not included. And if we also have here a round bracket, that means that 20 is not included. Right, let's look at this example. So we have a round bracket, 5, comma 12, and then we have a closed or a square bracket. Right. So it means from 5 to 12, so this is going from 5 to 12, do not include 5, but do include 12. And then, also, you just need to know these. So we have um, x is between a and b, and it's an open interval, right? So open interval, it means that a is not included and b is not included, right? And then next up, we have a closed interval, right? Closed interval, that means that A is included and B is included. Note the circles here, the difference in the circles. This one is not shaded because it's not including A or B. And then also this one, it's shaded because it's including A and also including B, right? And then for the third one, we have a semi-open interval, right? So A is included see our square bracket there and then B is not included so a we're going to shade it in B we're not going to shade it in round bracket square bracket same thing for the last one we have semi op open interval we're going to not include a and B is included for a is not going to be shaded in and then B we're going to shade it in. okay so please know these Aww. Um, interval notation is just another way of representing row numbers on the number line. Right, so let's look at some examples. So it says represent the following on a number line. Please note, I highlighted this part because this is crucial, right? So it's another way of representing real numbers on the number line, right? So they have to be real numbers. It has to fall under a real number in order for you to be able to represent it on the number line using interval notation okay so example seven represent the following on a number line so we have a oh we have a bracket a bracket there minus one and then we have a three and then we have a square bracket right so this part means that minus one is not included and then the three there 
because it's a square bracket that means that the three is included and I'm going to shade it in and I'm just going to draw that line there because remember it's a real it's real numbers it's representing real numbers okay and then B we have a square bracket minus five six and then we have that bracket there that's not including six right so that will be minus five that's six there we have our circles shade in at five do not shade at six six is not included and five is included real numbers guys these are straight line to show that it's going from minus five to not including six okay this one now it's including three and it's going all the way to infinity right so the reason why we're putting this bracket and not a square bracket here is because infinity is not like a defined number it's not 10 it's not 12 it's just infinity okay so that's why we're putting this round bracket here okay so if you're using if maybe it's going to infinity or negative infinity you always put a round bracket there okay so in this case you have the three we're going to shade it in because it's included it's going to infinity right so we just put that arrow there to indicate that it just goes on and on and on and on and on and then for d we have um it's going from minus infinity to four right so we're going to stop at 4 there. 4 is not included. We have a round bracket. 4 is not included. And it's going all the way to negative infinity. So we're going to illustrate that with that arrow there. It just goes on and on and on and on to negative infinity. Okay. And then now, let's look at these examples that do the opposite of what we just did. So they say write the following in interval notation. Right. So now that give us a number line and then we have to write it in interval notation. Right. So we see that now number line there minus two is shaded. Eight is not shaded. So that means minus two is included. That's a square bracket. Eight not shaded. That means it's not included. That's a round bracket. Right. So then this would be our answer. So a square bracket minus two, eight, and then round bracket thing. Then part B. You see that it's minus 2 and it's shaded and it's going all the way to infinity, right? Because it's minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. So it's actually increasing. So it's going all the way to infinity. So that's why we have a square bracket minus 2, and then we have infinity, and then we have that there to show that it's going all the way to infinity, right? And then C, we have minus 4, right? So minus 4, we're going to not shade in there because minus 4 is not included, right? It's not included. And then we're going all the way to negative infinity because it's decreasing, right? It's going backwards this way, right? So to write our interval notation, we're going to put our negative infinity as you can see it's going that way so that'll be minus infinity and then we'll put our round brackets and then here we have minus four and then we also put a round bracket because minus four is not included in this right and finally we're done that's the end of our session thank you guys for joining me okay so i'm just gonna leave you with something to think about it says you're braver than you believe, smarter than you seem, and stronger than you think by Winnie the Pooh. Guys, you are actually braver than you believe. You're smarter than you seem, and you're stronger than you think, okay? So don't underestimate yourself. So please, 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 please just go to the link below this video and download the PDFs and do all the questions that are in those PDFs.